Hello friends, welcome to another episode of the Urban Home Studying Channel. If this is the first time you're visiting with us, I want to extend to you a very warm welcome and invite you to watch any of our over 560 videos that we've arranged for your convenience in playlists as we are confident you're going to find something both useful and entertaining to watch. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today is your birthday, I want to wish you a very happy birthday. So last week we showed you this space, which is our TV, that lacks good organization and presentation and we start building an entertainment system that will be going around the TV, showcasing the TV and give us better organization. Mm -hmm. So today, we are going to attempt to finish this project. And who might really fail? We have not tried a project this scale before. This is both big in, in size, in dimensions, which presents a problem for us. Our shop is small and we have eight foot boards that we have to cut and manipulate. So we're going to have to be very creative and we decided some of the assembly will actually happen indoors for two reasons. North Carolina heat and uh, space in the shop, right? Mm -hmm. So combining those two reasons, we're going to do some if not most of the assembly here. So if nothing else, you're going to see us fail today. Hopefully we won't. But we're going to try things we've not tried before. And we already have changed our mind about a couple of things that had we really given it, I don't want to say more thought, if we spend more time in the planning, we might have done things a little different. For example, the top of our furniture, uh, we would have liked it to be stained versus painted, and we painted already, so we're not going to change that. Maybe at a later time, we might want to do that. But mm -hmm. for now, we have changed some of the, the design elements, and we are going to show you in, in detail everything we're going to do to hopefully achieve this. So one of the first things will be to remove this furniture from here. Right, got to clean up the space to have space to put something new. We need to get space to put more stuff. <laughs> so stick around and we're going to show you it. So today we're finishing our uh, entertainment center that we started last weekend. And here is the final product. And it came out pretty good, don't you say, Miss Wizard? Mm -hmm. It is what we envisioned. And we had a couple of hiccups, but nothing really major. And you're going to see them as we were working on that. But uh, overall, this is what we're thinking now. Stick around and we're going to talk more about it. So because we're going to have to need power in here, we're going to make an opening. And we probably need to use a vacuum now, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> and we're going to try to keep this in a minimum. You can, of course, make more than one. Mm -hmm. We're going to use one to bring in the... We don't need heavy duty amperage here, we'll only for the TV and right. game. So we're going to use a, a cable, bring it in here. Uh, let's clean it up and we're going to show you how it will work. So nothing is finished yet, but we want to give you a general idea. This will be, what you see on the floor, will be the overall width of the, of the piece, right? Mm -hmm. And it will be about 80 inches uh, high, tall. Yep, just to clear the TV and have another couple of inches. So in true fashion, the way we do things, in order to avoid measuring everything, we're going to leave that there and that will be the cap piece, right, the top mm -hmm. piece. So everything else we're going to build using this as our dimension uh, measure stick, yep. storyboard, right? Yep. That's a freaking big storyboard, but that's what it is in essence. It's a storyboard. Yep. So we're going to do a lot of uh, cutting. We need to cut four boards to 80 inches now. Right. And we're going to go and do that. So because of the dimensions of the board, we cannot use our table saw. So we made a makeshift situation here using our track saw, which have saved us many times in the past, right? Yep. And uh, we cut the four pieces, which will become the two sides of each of the two towers. But we cut them to the length which we wanted, which was 80 inches. Yep. So we're going to go on now. So we're using two of the cutoff pieces to to tell us the story of how wide our cells are going to be. And uh, 
And what do we read? It says 11 and a half. Okay, so that would be our um, self length, uh, not length, width. And that way we don't have to do complicated measures and subtract the width of the board and anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. We are continuing using a storyboard kind of approach. So we're going to go and cut how many? We said five uh, per, per tower. How many cells do you want? Probably, yeah, five. All right. We are a little, we took a little more off than the mark, so I don't know if that's good or not. So I can it's see the mark. It's going to be okay. Okay. Yeah. You're good with it? Okay. Okay. All right, folks, so we, you want to show the... Yeah. We already cut uh, two of our boards to the correct dimensions, to the correct width, mm -hmm. and now we're cutting it to the correct depth. So right. we marked one of ourselves, and uh, we've set our tables for repeated cuts. Let's make sure we don't cut the same one twice, it will be too short. <laughs> Chris, you yep, work. with the grain. There's a little bit of assembly process here on everything we do, right? We have a lot of repeatable cuts. We made four same cuts for the towers. We made 10 cuts here, 20 cuts actually, right? How many cuts? A lot of yeah, cuts. A lot of cuts. And uh, so you need to repeat, but that's why designing so that you, you set it and you make all the cuts you need at one time makes sense. Also during this cut, we were careful to take any imperfections away from the wood, right? We have any damage and so forth. Uh, this was the time to do it. So now we know we have at least three good sides because we made three cuts on each board. And mm -hmm. the last one, if, it, if we need to, we'll just turn it over to be right. non-visible. All right, so we're going to move on. And, and I think the next part will be uh, start staining. Mm -hmm. We decided we're going to stain the cells. Okay, let's do that. So Miss Weezer decided to uh, stain that um, self. To, to make it a little more visually interested. So now she's using a, a damp cloth to take any fine dust particles off. That way the stain will be very uniform. So we're here putting a second coat on the facing of the drawers with the white spray paint. And this can is just about out. I'm determined to get my money's worth out of it. <laughs> I, think, I, think that's about I it. think that's about it. So we're going to switch out the sprayer to the new can and probably relocate that drawer a little bit higher. Now these little devices worth their money in gold. Oh yeah, super nice, especially if you're doing a big project like this with a lot of spray. It's a more of a trigger action instead yeah. of a button. So. And you can hold it as a. Right. It's a better grip than holding the whole can. Right. Right. Okay. Let's get that switched out. Here we go. Now we're set up so we're a little bit taller. Not on the ground. Have a new can of paint. Yeah, that was my problem. I wasn't told enough. Yeah. New can of paint. Getting that coat going. Now since Mrs. Wizard is not here, I'm only painting things that are visible. Otherwise, <laughs> she likes to paint everything. I don't. Probably got a couple of light spots on this edge. What edge? This top edge. I don't think that's visible. It is. Not when it is a closed drawer. Do you see? 
You know, this is the double the drawer. When it's closed, you okay. can't see. So we're going to let that dry and move on to the next one because we've got, what, six drawers to do? I think so. Okay. So here we are on the last drawer. I was wrong, it's only four uh, because they took out the three top smaller ones to make the little cubby hole. Actually, the middle one was huge. For the electronic. The middle one? Yeah, there were three on top. Okay. But there were three drawers on top but that we're not using for this particular project. And we're going um, to find something to do with it. But them. we will use them on something. We will upcycle those as well. So here we are with this last one. Here's the other three. They're going to dry. One of the good things about upcycling is you can use parts for more than one project. Right? Absolutely. And especially like if you switch out like hardware or any other efficient. pieces, then... What do you think? Yeah. Um, anyway, you just save those things and you might have another project to come along. All right. Cool. Well, <clears throat> here we have the 10... Uh, Selves, I guess, is what they are, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Abida has done a little bit of sanding. Again, you don't need to go crazy with the sanding. Right, because we don't want to change the dimension. We cut them specifically, but we do want to have those edges be um, as as flat and clean as we can get them so that they make a nice fitment with the side pieces for the shelving Right. Unit. And then Mrs. Wizard is going to actually stain those now, right? Yep. Now there are a couple of them with a slight bow, and if there is a bow, try to put it with the bow up, so gravity will help it. So the archway should kind of yeah. go up toward the sky, and then that way gravity will help to flatten it out. Of course these are small enough that really a bow should not be a big deal, shouldn't make a big difference. There's only a couple, but you can see them from right. the side. So if possible, but it's, put them up. It's very small. Okay, so we're going to get started with staining on these. So here we are starting with staining the shelf pieces. We finished telling, staining what we'll call a shelf on the big unit, right? Right, it's that cubby shelf. Mm -hmm. And that is intended to house uh, game consoles and VCRs and things of this nature. All the electronics for the, the entertainment unit. Again, we repurpose what used to be a, a bedroom uh, dresser mm -hmm. into an entertainment center part. And we're building around it, of course, we're not using it as is. but. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of painting and staining in this project, and that's to be expected, right? You need to make it to fit your space. And when you paint those, of course, you need to paint the two, the top and bottom, and one front side. That's all you need to paint. Right. Okay, so we've got ten of those to do, and come back. So, <coughs> the other pieces we need to stain these two small pieces are actually trim and they're going to be at the bottom of its tower mm -hmm. and the big pieces that Mrs. Wizard is uh, standing right now are going to be support for the shelf that will be over the TV because it, it spans a very large area and we don't want it bowing it will look really ugly if that happens, right? Right Plus it wouldn't be useful if we cannot put things on it it would be just a... Just a look pretty? Yeah It look ugly if it's uh, sad, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of waiting time today with the stain and paint to dry, but that's part of the deal, right? We it that. sure is, especially with a project of this magnitude. So the next step hopefully will be the assembly of the towers. And um, if that doesn't uh, give us any difficulty, we'll assemble the, two, assemble the two towers, put them one on each side, of the entertainment center and then cap, cap them on top, right? Right. Sounds good. Sounds what, great. What can go wrong? So, Nothing. Well, building these towers can be a story, a project all by its own right, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to build two identical ones and we are using screws and counter, countersink them so we can put some putty or uh, uh, caulking and uh, when it is touched up, it will disappear. We won't even know it's there. We're using a storyboard for the distance, right? Yes. And we are using a square to make sure that we're square on our, uh, our dimension. So, again, this is MDF and wood. 
and we chose that for both uh, economy and uh, quickness. Is that the right term? Is there such a term as quickness? Mm -hmm. Expeditiousness? You want me to go first? Okay. And if you, I don't know if you can see it, but we have a countersink uh, drill bit there that will allow the screws to disappear. You can also use dowels there if you so choose. Force. Okay. You can use dowels for a more elegant thing, especially if you just stain the whole piece, right? Yep. We are choosing to use screws and okay. countersink them. So we're going to finish that and we're going to show it to you when it is there to make sure that you are square. Clearly, I need better countersink bits because they don't seem to be doing it a very easy job, but they are working, right? Yeah. So you do that all around, and we're going to show you the finished tower so in a few moments. a little piece of the same uh, type of wood that we use for our trim as a storyboard. We are making sure that we have the right distance from the floor and this is in essence our bottom self, right? Yep. So using that storyboard ensures that we are on the right dimension and without having to measure and uh, potentially make a mistake by measuring. As you know, we are the no-measure channel. Maybe we need to change our name to that. The no-measure channel, right? Can you do the plug just to make sure? Now if you're not patient like that, you could wait a day or so to let everything to dry before you start assembly, but we are not patient and we needed to do the video. And oh, All right, so, plus the storyboard comes ha uh, handy when something like that happens, because now you can be f perfectly aligned again, mm -hmm. even though your, your board moved. And the process will be the same. We're going to use a, we're using a storyboard for the distance for the not the distance what I want to say the spacing between ourselves. But you can see how nicely the storyboard works there, right? Mm -hmm. It just makes everything much easier. And I discovered that my counter bit sinks, uh, my counter sink bits are worthless. I need better bits. As we say, it's more important to buy high quality bits than very expensive first two thousand uh, dollar driver. Just a short progress to show you. We have raised the two towers. That sounds very ominous, doesn't it? Raise the towers. Mm -hmm. And uh, structurally, we really need the top uh, self. And then a lot of detail work, right? Right. Which we probably won't finish, but we'll finish the video today. We'll you have a good sense of what the piece looks like and how it functions but we still have a couple of details to do and we're going to talk to you about tips, strings, things we learned things we would have done different things we really like about how the piece is turning out, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely this is a multiple day build there's no way you can do that in one day for many many reasons, right? Yeah, for And sure. definitely that was at the limit of what uh, our tooling could produce Mm -hmm. Our shop was too small for it, we have to do a lot of things outside, right? right. So this is a challenging uh, project because of space and, and you need a lot of space to be able to, to assemble it. So we're going to show you the next step of the assembly and then we're going to tell you uh, some very interesting points. Okay. So we put two support elements here on the top and they serve two purposes. One is to keep the spacing of the towers correct and the other is to support the weight of the top shelf. Okay. 
So yeah, that's it the same way I was doing before. All right, and now we're going to put the top on and it is clean up and, and detail work, hiding the screws and things like that. So let's work the box and here is our finished product. And as you can see, it makes a huge difference in the space, right? Yeah. Compare what we had before, it will give us a, a ton of more storage options and an area to display things. We have to do a couple of more uh, fine tuning things and that, that is not a problem, we're going to do those. Uh, without a problem. Here on the top we might build another one or another. That I like it the way it is. Do you think we need to build on top another one or? Maybe not. You know, we, we haven't decided. Because you can still use that top shelf for display oh, yeah, stuff. I'll put my boats probably or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, things that we might have done different. I think it would look like it would level up if the top was also stained. Like the level up term. Mm -hmm. And we still might be able to do it. If we decide to do that, it just requires a little work, right? We, we have to sand it and, and send it, and we might need to do that. Other than that, anything else with Wizard you don't like of our design? No, and this is very specific to our space because we had a door on one side and our thermostat on the other, so we, we had you know we had to make our dimensions precise for our right. space. Right. Yeah, if you, if you see here, we have a thermostat. And we didn't want batting on the thermostat, right? I mean, that would be ugly. Right. Uh, but definitely, you can go wider, or this can be wider if you have a smaller TV. Right. I mean, I mean, sure. There are all kinds of options here. But overall, we think, oh, we probably need to put the hardware. So let's do that, and we're going to show you a more finished, finished look. Okay. So this was an interesting project and a learning project, and we actually uh, did a lot of on the flying redesign and uh, looking back at it, we which we've done a couple of things a little different. And there are a couple of things we're still going to do, but we're not finished. For example, we're going to do a little different, uh, uh, and not entertaining, um, painting, decorating of the, the front of the drawers, because they're a little plain now. But we're not holding the product for that or the video for that. We might make a short video relating to what we're going to do there. And we did, uh, we do think that if we stain the top instead of painting it, the way we stain this, the piece will pop out a little more, right, than, than it is now. Because we really like the accents in the drawers, I mean in the drawers, in the cells, and in the, the beam there. So what else will we have done different? Is that it? I think so. I mean, I, it came out exactly what I envisioned, and it's definitely going to be useful for the things that we need to store here in the living room. Yes, I, I think overall, it is our way of just, like everything you do when you build it yourself, you end up finding a couple of things you could have done different, right? I mean, that's, that's part of the learning process. And we did change a couple of things. For example, the decision to, to stain these uh, was actually made at the store, I think, when we're buying the material. So uh, decisions were made. When we're talking about uh, material and cost, this whole piece cost a little under $260, including the purchase of this. And uh, unfortunately, lumber prices are still crazy, at least in the United States. So the purchase of this was both for saving time and clearly saving money. We could not have built this for the amount of money we spent for it. Because if you can imagine an eight by, a one by 10 by eight board was 30 some dollars today. Right. And we need two of them just to make the selling. So that gives you an idea. I mean, the selling you see cost us almost $60 which is a ridiculous amount of money. But overall, we're, we're very pleased with it. Uh, a little bit of design changes. We're going to have to do a couple of small ting tingering. Tingering is the right word, right? And uh, make it even better. Tweaking. No, ting it is the word tingering. Tinkering. Tinkering, yeah. right. Okay, tinkering. Now, the, this now is sitting as a unit, but it's really built in different components, right? This is a component, the, the, let's call it the base. Then each of the two, let's call them towers, is a component. And then the top shelf and the brackets, the connected uh, lumber, is a component. And we have it together, so if we need to, we can take it apart. Otherwise, this would be a very difficult piece of uh, furniture to move, if you choose to, to do so. So this can be taken apart, each tower can be taken apart, and this can be taken apart. This is probably the easiest, I think. 
it is held with full four screws to the whole piece. So it's very sturdy, but yet easy to move apart, right? And each of the towers is what, two screws that hold it to the piece together? Mm -hmm. So it's very sturdy, it is, it is not going to topple, I mean, it is pretty secure, but it can be easily taken apart, right? Yeah. So uh, overall, the assembly is what we learned the most about it. The way we did it was a little, it was not the best use of, of our time. The, the easiest way to build it is actually to cut the pieces, paint and stay them in one day, and then assemble them in a second day, right? It, it took us a period of probably four days total to build this because we had to wait a long time for paint to dry. And it was not the most efficient use of our time. So that, that is another learning. Well, folks, this concludes our episode for today. And I certainly hope you did enjoy. We definitely, I will use the word enjoy building it, but we must have certainly enjoy the outcome, right? I mean, the, this is exactly what we needed for this space and what we were envisioning. If you did enjoy and learn something from this episode, we would appreciate the thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down works as well. Share, like, subscribe, and if you want to be part of our giveaway, make sure to leave a comment and, and like on this video or any video until we hit the 8,000 subscriber mark. And when you hit this mark, the competition will be ended and we're going to make the drawing, right? Uh, from Dr. Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida, and the Urban Home Studying Channel, stay safe, put your mask on, wash your hands, get vaccinated, and we're going to see you soon. Stay safe, friends.